So it's really a true pleasure and honor to be back to my alma mater after exactly 30 years. And it's a true pleasure to talk about my two big passions about digitalization and sustainability. Over my 30 years now, working in different functions in construction industry, I learned about two key facts in this wonderful industry. The first one, construction industry consumes around 50%, five zero, of the materials which are explored day by day from this planet. And by that contribute, according to the International Energy Agency, around 40% to the carbon footprint which are human-made, again, on this planet. And the second fact about construction industry is that there has hardly been any productivity gain over the last decades, not even centuries. So the productivity curve in construction industry is basically flat. And you probably agree with me that this gives tremendous opportunities and potential to improve both productivity but also sustainability. And that's actually I like to talk about what are in particular these challenges, but even more importantly, how digital means will help and can help to overcome these challenges and address the potential. So let me look now into the challenges on sustainability in particular. And you saw already before this nice picture, nothing to do with construction industry. Maybe these are some clothes in some areas to work on construction site. But my question is here, which of the two shirts, the, the red one or the blue one, is more sustainable? And probably I try to, to guess no one here in this room, and probably no one at all, can objectively state which of the two clothes has the higher or the better sustainability performance. And if you go now one level deeper, go to the construction industry, start with a simple, two simple tools. Also here, which one, the orange or the blue one, is more sustainable? And again, it's probably not possible to answer that objectively. Despite the fact that millions of data, sustainability, non-financial data, meanwhile, are collected, in the company I work for, we have more than 300 million data points just for non-financial data. But I can tell you, despite the inflation of green labels, we see all around many companies are really innovative to create new green labels. It's not objectively possible to assess the performance today. In the opposite, with this increasing number of label, green labels, the mistrust into the true performance of a product or even a company is even increasing. So the question now is how to overcome this mistrust, which for sure is existing right now. And here I like to go through four steps which I believe are essential to build up trust, again, to measure the true performance, sustainable performance of a product or even in the end of a whole building. Let me start with the first step. And again, it's crucial that we know and define properly what is sustainability, that we define the key performance indicators which make sustainability. And that might vary company by company, might vary industry by industry, but for sure, the product carbon footprint is one key performance indicator. If you look deeper, maybe it's also interesting to know what's the recycled content in this product. Or maybe even the composition of materials, the so-called bill of substance. What type of materials are in this product? What's the weight? What's the origin? Where is this material was coming from? And that needs to be defined. So that's step number one. Step number two, and that's actually the most, most important one, is to define a method an internationally accepted method how to measure these key performance indicators. And again, to stay with the most obvious one, the product carbon footprint. So in essence, the emissions cost, the CO2 emissions cost over the complete life cycle of this product. 
that needs to be defined. And if you ask today six experts, presumably experts, probably are experts, please calculate the carbon footprint of this power tool here, I can guarantee you, you will get six quite different answers, a quite big range. So a method, a commonly defined method needs to be defined. It doesn't sound rocket science, but today that's not the case. And then the third step is we need to define targets, smart targets, as we call it, to address, and let's take again the carbon footprint, smart means specific, measurable, it should be ambitious, relevant, and time-bounded. And I think all is possible for a product carbon footprint. What's the carbon footprint today? What's the goal for the next, let's say, five years? And then you measure it year by year, and that leads me to the first, to the fourth step, we make, have to make it transparent. And here again, if we look to corporations, if we look to all kind of sustainability reports which are around, also here, companies try to change the method, the tables, the dashboards, year by year, for whatever reason, but that is not the right transparency. So it's important to be transparent, what was the base, where are we on the progress towards the target. So that's step number four. So again, let's summarize these four steps. First, define the KPIs. And again, that might, be, might vary industry by industry, but what are the sustainability key performance indicators? Define the method, how to calculate that. Third, set targets, smart targets, and fourth, be transparent, consistent in your communication and transparency. So now let's go deeper now and see how digitalization can support these four steps, in particular, step number four on the transparency. And now imagine that you take your smartphone and you have this product and there's a QR code and you just scan this QR code and then the so-called digital product passport is popping up. It's nothing else than the digital data for this particular product consisting of all kind of technical data. So what's the performance, what's the weight, what's the reach, the duration, the, the power, whatever technical data might be applicable in this case for this power tool. But it goes beyond that. It includes also the instruction for use. So this is an instruction for use, simple one to charge a battery for such a power tool. It's about 400 pages uh, in 20 languages. No visualization or limited one. Obviously, no video material. Imagine you have a digital passport. You get it in your language. You get the supporting video material. It's always up to date. Wonderful to have that. And the digital passport should also include all kind of sustainability data or precisely the defined key performance indicators, like the carbon footprint, like the recycle content, like the bill of substance, which makes this product. How easy could it be? So that's the digital passport. And now go a little bit beyond the product, go into this building. This building consists of thousands of different products with a high repetition. I mean, these chairs you're sitting on, it's all the same, but you can have a digital passport for these chairs. You can have a digital passport for the ceiling all the material, and that sums up to the carbon footprint, to the sustainability footprint of this building. How wonderful would it be? And you might have heard about BIM. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. It's nothing else than the digital twin of a physical building. And if we integrate now this digital passport into this BIM model, we have over oh, the complete life cycle of the building from the design phase, operation, end of life, we have a con continuous overview about the sustainability dashboard of this building. So that makes it really, really beneficial. So overall, what are the benefits if we apply now these four steps and the more digitalization in construction industry? So number one, it's very obvious. If I have this digital passport, I can easily compare these two products along the defined key performance indicators. I know, based on the standardized method, what is the carbon footprint, 
and I have the whole origin. I can trace it back to the origin. And hopefully these are audited, third-party proved data along this method. So I have the possibility to compare. Second, and that's why I brought this nice booklet, these will be replaced by digital data. So no need to print thousands of tons. And I can tell you, in our company, we print thousands of tons of these booklets, instruction of use, year by year. It will be completely replaced. Huge benefit to the environment. And third, if there's any change on the product, sometimes we discover a mistake, something needs to be adopted, you don't need to reprint it, you simply adjust it digitally and the user has the latest update. If we go now into the building, uh, again, the composition of thousands of products, the benefit is even bigger. I can compare during the design phase at the very, very early stage, different design alternatives for the building replace concrete with wood or other material and immediately see before the building is constructed the carbon footprint, the recycle content, the recyclability of a particular asset or building. Tremendous benefit at an early stage. During operation, I have always the overview of what's the sustainability performance of this particular building, like for instance the energy usage per square meter. I can monitor that, I can improve that, I see leakages, I can immediately adjust it. And then most importantly at end of life, I know exactly which type of materials are in this building. I can detect it, I can make sure that the max is reused on my com product level or if not possible on material level and move it in proper recycling loops. So tremendous advantages which are just laying there and it's all about to take them and make it happen. So in sum, I hope you share my conviction that digitalization truly reconstruct construction industry and by that have a tremendous impact on our planet. Thank you very much.